Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Steve Turner, the new home specialist, here today to talk to you about the Pennsylvania Consumer Notice. Now again, we're going to get into the three different things that are covered on the Consumer Notice for us here. But first, just keep in mind that if you like anything real estate related, how to buy a house, how to sell a house, any sort of information you might need, especially when it comes to building a house, please hit the subscribe button, follow this channel, and you'll find the information you need. Now again, back to the Pennsylvania Consumer Notice for you. The Pennsylvania Consumer Notice, this is a, a two-page state form that is required that real estate professionals such as myself show any of our clients or customers prior to talking about real estate. And it covers three important things. One, what type of agency agreements or relationships can you have or how can real estate agents work in the state of Pennsylvania? Two, the sort of minimum requirements that all agents must provide in the state of Pennsylvania. And three, the fact that a real estate recovery fund does exist and is being disclosed to you. So let's take these three parts one at a time. Part one. There's four different ways real estate agents can help you in the state of Pennsylvania. They're allowed to be seller's agents, buyer's agents, dual agents, or transaction licensees. A buyer's agent is just that, somebody who actually represents the buyer of a real estate transaction. Now, we're gonna come back to this in a future video because not every agent is a buyer's agent even if you're a buyer working with a real estate agent. In other words, if you have not entered into a buyer's agency agreement, then that buyer's agent technically in the state of Pennsylvania is to be operating as type number two, a seller's agent, in which case their job as a seller's agent is to represent the best interest of the seller of any property. So even if they're not the listing agent of that property, a seller's agent is designed to represent the seller's best interest. By default, typically the seller of the property pays all the real estate commission fees to all the agents involved and their brokers. So by default, the state of Pennsylvania said all agents are supposed to be seller's agents unless you enter into a separate buyer's agency agreement. So you had seller's agents, you had buyer's agents. Dual agents are basically an agent who's handling both the seller and the buyer during a transaction. However, there could sometimes be conflicts of interest between those, so therefore the state requires that that agent disclose the fact that they are trying to represent both parties and as such, yeah, there might be some information they're not able to fully provide their seller because it must be confidential for their buyer and vice versa. There's sort of a subcategory that goes along with that is an, a real estate broker could say, you know what, since I've got the seller, I've got the buyer, I'm going to assign somebody on my staff to only represent the seller and this other person on my staff to only represent the actual buyer. This way, it's what we would call basically designated agency. The dual agent now has protection in place so that both seller and buyer are represented a little more fairly. Buyer's agents, seller's agents, dual agents, the last one we won't focus on as much is what we call transaction licensees or transactional agents. They're really independent third parties that are neutral in the real estate transaction. They're not representing you as a seller. They're not representing you as a buyer. They don't represent any party. So they would come into play, like let's say for example, seller and buyer somehow find each other and agree to buy the seller's property. No agents are involved, but they wanna make sure they're compliant with state law and do the paperwork accordingly and keep themselves out of legal trouble. They could hire a transaction licensee 
which most real estate professionals or realtors these days don't really practice that because there could be some liability issues. Um, however, you will find obviously some attorneys who will do that, where you go to the attorney, the transaction licensee and say, hey, look, we're, we're already agreeing to sell the property and buy this property together. There's no agents involved. How much would you charge just to do our paperwork and make sure our transaction is compliant? That's a transaction licensee. First part of the consumer notice, it explains the agencies, which I just described to us as well, those four different types. The second part, which is typically going to be on the back or the second page of the consumer notice, talks about the minimum behaviors that all real estate professionals in the state of Pennsylvania are obligated to give you. Meaning, we must be honest, truthful, act in a timely manner. So regardless of who we work for, we cannot lie to you. So if we work for the seller, we cannot lie to a buyer. You know, the state does hold us accountable for all that. So it does go into more detail about those responsibilities in section two. And section three is basically the real estate recovery fund. It discloses the fact that in the state of Pennsylvania, if there was, I call it basically the way to report us as real estate professionals. If there was a problem with a real estate professional, if a deal somehow went south and you're entitled to a refund but have not gotten your refund, the state has set up a process through this recovery fund that you can report all that information to the Real Estate Commission. The Real Estate Commission will jump in, they will do their investigation after the consumers, of course, reimburse. How does the Real Estate Commission afford to do all that? Well, as real estate professionals, as we actually get our license and we pay our fees each and every other year to the state, part of that money gets set aside so that the state of Pennsylvania does have a fund available to help people in these cases. Then again, it gets turned over to the Real Estate Commission, who of course sort of polices or enforces the real estate rules here in the state of Pennsylvania. So again, those are the three things that the state really wants you to see. So don't be intimidated if you see somebody, a real estate professional say, hey look, here's a consumer notice. You're supposed to see this. We're supposed to go over it before we can start looking at houses, discussing any of what we call the M&Ms, your money, your motivation, your reasons for moving, and how we can best help you. Again, that's the way it's supposed to be in the state of Pennsylvania. We can talk more in detail about buyer's agency, seller's agencies, the advantages and the benefits of those agencies and how to enter into them in other videos. But this video was just trying to go over what the consumer notice is, which is a state form all of us real estate professionals are required to share with you. Thanks for tuning in. Please do us a favor, hit the subscribe and stay tuned for other episodes of how we're helping you cut through the confusion of the real estate market. Thanks so very much.